this isn't the video that I have planned for today, but uh, something came up, so I'm going to deal with it. This is a little cooking thermometer um, that works pretty well. Uh, we've been using it in the kitchen for quite a while. However, it recently had an unfortunate uh, meeting with the floor. And now it doesn't seem to want to turn on unless you push and hold the switch. As soon as you let go of it, it goes off. So I'm guessing that either the switch got mechanically damaged or the circuit board got cracked when it hit the floor. Regardless, you know, the task has been assigned to me to either make it work or replace it. So I'm going to try and make it work. Inside, we have the probe with uh, some kind of sticky goop. I thought that would be, hmm, I thought that would be rigid and whatnot, but no, it's actually still sticky. Okay, so two wires going down into the probe. I don't know if that's going to be resistive or a thermocouple, but for now, I see two screws and a battery. The tiniest screwdriver tip. Fortunately, I have a fairly large assortment of them that have come with various different screwdrivers that I've bought over the last few years. Normally, when I'm doing a teardown, I'm not too gentle about it because I don't care if it goes back together. This I do care about. Hmm. Okay, those switches are cheaper than I thought. They just short the two pads or not. Okay. So I think that is the power one. It is. And that is the Celsius Fahrenheit one. Oh, well, that's painless. So all I need to do is grab the little switchy button guy here and pry up the wipers ever so slightly can it be that easy well while we're in here let's look at what we've got we have an LCD, it looks like it's attached with one of the zebra stripe things. We have a few passive components. Oh, I can see the ubiquitous blob underneath there. And then another couple of resistors and a capacitor. And then just the battery and the temperature sensor on this side. Hmm. What J1 and J2 are doing on the back. They're test points, obviously. Actually, no, wait a minute. Those look like split pads. That one is connected, and that one is not connected. Hmm. Some sort of options. Wonder what happens. Well, I'm going to reassemble this quickly, which is going to be fairly straightforward. It should be, I think. Do I need to give that a little nudge to get it in? That's not good, although maybe it'll help us. So there's the LCD been knocked off its moorings. I'm always so scared of these zebra stripes because they always seem like such freaking magic. Down in there, you. That's tight. So what was hiding underneath it then? Nothing really surprising. The mystery blob, that's about it. So what I don't understand fully is how these zebra stripes get lined up. But I'm hoping that it will line itself up just automatically when I uh, put this back together here. Maybe it is just the precise alignment of uh, all these components in this cheap injection molded case. 
So let's see what happens. Comes on. Celsius Fahrenheit switch works. That's still not working properly. Hmm. Maybe if I make these pads a little bit more three dimensional. Okay. There we go. It's on. Switches to Fahrenheit. Switches back to Celsius. Turns off. Turns on. That's what you want to see. Beautiful. Now then, let's put her back together here. Give the wires a nice little twist in there so that they're not getting caught. Yes, it does work. My coffee's got cold while I'm doing this, but that's okay. It works. Never would have expected that to be the problem that I'd have reassembling it. Kind of thought it would be that silly zebra stripe thing. And I still don't know how those things work. Apparently, the official name for the zebra stripe connector is an elastometric connector. And zebra stripe is actually a trademark. Hmm. Never knew that. Consisting of alternating conductive and insulating regions in a rubber or elastomer matrix. They excel in shock and anti-vibration applications. Okay. They can even be a, act as a gasket. That's interesting. Could be carbon or silver or gold. I'm guessing the black ones are carbon, probably. They're used in two ways. Spacing of rubber conductive strips equals the PCB conductor spacing with precise alignment. Or the spacing of the rubber conductive strips less than half the PCB conductor spacing. So you don't need precise alignment. Here's just a catalog from, I guess, from the manufacturer. Conductive layer pitch as low as 0 0.05 millimeters. Wow, that's, that's crazy. I'd seen these things before, but I hadn't really looked into them before. So this is, uh, this is kind of fascinating, actually. So carbon, silver, gold, or what is FGS? Zero insertion force. And that uses gold-plated. Wow. Different pitch spacing, conductive layers per, per inch. Up to 500 conductive layers per inch. Wow, that's a super fine pitch. So here's the thing that the article was talking about, the Wikipedia was talking about. This one's got a whole bunch of really narrow conductive and insulating strips. Each one is narrower than the gap between the conducting strips. So you don't get shorts between the pads, but as long as one or two of these lines up with the pads above, then it's going to make contact. Yeah, this is just one of those things that I never knew a whole bunch about. I mean, about all I knew about them was they existed and they worked like magic. Uh, now I know ever so slightly more. But this is uh, another one of those advances in technology that's happened sort of in the interim since I used to work on component level stuff decades ago and now that I'm getting back into it again. And it's fascinating and just a little bit scary. Oh, here we go. Current carrying capacity per wire, so per conductive stripe, 250 milliamps per max. Wow, that's crazy. Less than 25 milliohms per contact pad at, at 100 milliamps. I'm going to put a link to this down in the comment there in the description, just uh, rather than me just going through here and rambling about it. Uh, if you're interested, uh, feel free to take a look. Well, that was a fascinating little detour I hadn't expected to go on. Uh, all because this thing got dropped on the floor. Not the video I was expecting to do today, but what's life without a few surprises once in a while? Thanks for watching. Comments, questions down below. I will talk to you later.